Okay, we had a bit of a situation on the trail yesterday with one of the riders in our group. Uh, his chain came apart. Looked like uh, the master link came apart. Uh, of course, we found the chain, but we didn't find the link. Don't know if the clip just popped off or if it broke or whatever. Um, we haven't seen that kind of a problem in, in a long, long, long time. Um, as long as you do basic maintenance and do some checks on your chains, um, they tend to last almost forever these days. Um, the O-ring and X-ring chains uh, need very little lubrication, mainly just lube them to keep the O-rings from getting too dry and cracking, um, and maybe throw some WD-40 or basic chain lube on them once in a while to keep the chains from rusting if the bike's going to sit for a while, or you live in a very humid climate. Here in Colorado, we don't have to worry about that. Okay, um, I'm going to do this video here because when we were on the trail trying to fix his chain, uh, he did not have a master link with him that matched his chain. So there was a couple of us that had master links. Uh, we carry them and the tools to do chain repair on the trail. And so we attempted to repair it, but the master link that we put in um, either wasn't long enough or the clip that we were trying to put on it was too thick. Uh, anyway, it um, we couldn't get the clip on. Uh, we got the link pressed on and he managed to get back to his truck. He was only about a mile and a half from the truck, maybe two miles. And um, he made it back and subsequently he's going to get the proper master link and carry it as a spare. But I wanted to make a video here showing you uh, what I've found going through my master links that I've been carrying in my tool packs and uh, give you an idea of what you might want to look at if you're carrying spare parts. You need to make sure that they're going to work for your chain. Okay, so here's uh, one of my chain kits. I carry a couple of spare links. Um, we have had uh, chains break before and we've needed to extend them. Um, and so having a couple of links as well as a couple of master links uh, lets you do that. Some O-rings. Um, I've got a couple of master links here and I have tested these on these links to make sure that they do work and I've got the clips attached. These are all used master links. Um, I think this one on the other hand is brand new and it matches the chain that's on the bikes that I run. Um, no wear on this one um, but this one you can see the the clip has worn but in an emergency situation it will suffice and i matched them up so that you know if you're on in the field you need to use them you've got the right combination to put them together the other thing you need to carry if you're going to be out on the trails and far away from the truck is a chain press a chain uh, a link press because if you don't have that, it's going to be really hard to press the link onto these master links, uh, the link plate. So carrying one of these is not very big, fits in the palm of my hand. Put it in your tool pack and carry it with you. Um, I find that when you use these, um, notice that this piece is a bigger slot than this so slot. This goes on the back side of the chain to hold the pins in place. This goes on to the uh, side that you're pressing the link in so that you can get the correct depth pressing the two together. Um, using the, the screws, um, you can definitely get more leverage using the outside two screws as you're tightening it down. The center one can be used as well, um, but it's more or less just kind of spacing everything off so that when you're tightening those outer screws down, um, you're pressing the link to, onto the to, or link plate onto the link itself. Uh, make sure you got the correct Allen wrench. Uh, you may need to put an extension on the end of that Allen wrench to get enough pressure to press your link on. But make sure you got those in your in your kit when you're out there deep in the trails in the woods otherwise you might be walking home okay i wanted to show you this clip 
uh, master link clip and you can see maybe in the video how thin it gets worn and the way these things wear it's not thin on that side is they wear it going through your chain guides and there's nothing you can do to really prevent that it's just going to happen but over time uh, as you're you know putting hours on the bike you should check that and if that's getting so thin like you see on this one um, you should probably replace the clip uh, it's very possible that on the one that failed this past uh, weekend that uh, his clip had failed and uh, just because it had worn so thin that it eventually just broke um, so anyway when you start to see those getting really thin like that it's a good idea just to go ahead and replace your master link they aren't going to last forever here's a few picks of the chain type that I run on my bikes and then I'm going to go into what master links will fit these chains and what master links may not fit these chains three different links showing the length from on the pins and the width of the grooves for the clip uh, the middle one, the PD, is a primary drive. The TYC, I have no idea what that is, but I had it in my pack. Four different clips that I had showing the thickness, not on the worn edges, but the thickness of each clip. Notice the differences. This Regina clip has wider grooves for the clip and a thicker clip. It wouldn't work with the thick clip, but if I put a thin clip on it, it would work on the primary drive chain. Not recommended. This is a brand new primary drive master link showing the length of the pins, the width of the grooves, and the thickness of the clip. The next picks show the three different master links pressed onto the primary drive chain. Note the pins sticking out from the link, how much there is in difference on each one of the master links. All three of these master links would work in an emergency situation, but the proper one to use is the one designed for the primary drive chain. Okay, these are both 520 uh, master links. Uh, this one's for a chain with O-rings, and this is for a chain that doesn't have O-rings. They're both 520, but you can see that there's definitely a difference in the size. So, I, I don't ever run non-O-ring chains, but if you're carrying some spares and you got a buddy who rides a motocross bike, and typically those don't run O-ring chains, and he has a chain that breaks, you could put your O-ring master link on his chain, but it's kind of going to stick out from all the other links. Um, you might want to carry, you know, a non-O-ring master link just in case you got those kind of buddies that you ride with that don't ever carry spare parts. Lastly, a couple plugs for the chains that I use on my bikes and for the chain oil that I use. I get both from Rocky Mountain ATV. I've been using these chains for years and years. I got thousands of miles on them. I highly recommend them. They seem to work and last quite well. I use this chain lube simply because it's cheap. I lube my chains every other ride or so, and it's just to keep those O-rings from drying up and cracking and falling out. Good stuff.